Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, and uh, yeah, a bit of a project that's off the beaten track today. Um, we're hearing a lot of controversy about the shocking state that uh, Deadly Premonition 2 has uh, shipped in for Nintendo Switch, and you know, wanted to know what was actually going on, I wanted to get to the bottom of it. Now, I've been doing some performance tests on this over the weekend, but I'm not a series veteran by any means. So to give some context on the whole franchise, I am joined by my hashtag friend and colleague, John Linneman. Why, hello there, Richard. <laughs> How are we doing today? <laughs> um, I'd say I've had better weekends uh, <laughs> because this really isn't great at all. But um, yeah, so here's the thing. I mean, I think at this point it's been established that Deadly Premonition 2 isn't exactly AAA fair and it never has been. And that's part of the charm. And I think um, there's been some kind of, uh, I don't know, a justification for the shocking performance of Deadly Premonition 2 by saying, hey, this is part of the DNA of the, of the series. And I noticed on Twitter that you took umbrage with this and uh, you have some other thoughts on the situation. Yeah, so I saw this going around. I haven't played Deadly Premonition 2 yet, I should note. I've played the original, of course, but... I'm kind of secretly hoping that the sequel shows up on another platform. <laughs> but basically, I played the first game on Xbox 360. So that's the version I own back from 2010. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really quirky, interesting game. If you're watching this, you probably already know all there is to know about this. But it got a re-release or sort of a conversion for PlayStation 3. And that was the director's cut. That version, unfortunately, is an absolute mess of a game, um, which I don't think Richard has that one, so we can't show it here, but that one runs terribly. But on Xbox 360, it is generally a game that didn't, like, its issues were never performance-related. So it's not to say it's perfect, but in general, you get a very stable 30 frames per second just exploring the world. You know, sometimes when driving in certain areas, it can get a little dicey, but... You know, when you're actually engaging in survival horror things and exploring the stages and even just driving around certain areas, uh, it's perfectly fine, honestly. And that, yeah. so I was surprised to see so many people coming out and say, oh, yeah, like, this is just that's just how the first game is. So we were hoping for more. But that's it's really not true. And in fact, as we'll see, Deadly Premonition 2 is not only uh not up to par with the 360 version, it's significantly worse than even the the bad conversions of the first game. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. Well, here's the thing. It's it's turned into a bit of a rabbit hole that I've desperately been trying to spend the weekend getting out of. But to get an idea of the of the story here, first of all, I played Deadly Premonition 2. It's not good. We will cover that in due course. And then, uh, obviously, your comments about the first one came up on Xbox 360 and the fact that you didn't particularly rate the Switch version. And I noticed on the day of launch where I bought Deadly Premonition 2, uh, Deadly Premonition 1 on the Switch was half price, so for my sins, I bought it. Uh, I mean, the developers are making quite a bit of money out of me at this point. And then you said, well, you know, the Xbox 360 is better than that. And so I had to yes. acquire the Xbox 360 version to give, give a kind of outlook of the way things look. And it's not a great port of the first one onto the Nintendo Switch. They unlock the frame rate, so the consistency we had... Has, has gone at its best. It will run at 60 frames per second, but most of the time it's in the 40s, possibly lower. Uh, when things get a bit more complicated, you're into the 30s. Just kind of screamed out for a 30 FPS cap. You do get 720p docked versus 576p on the Xbox 360. Uh, you do get better controls, I think. But you can see that um, this whole running unlocked situation isn't particularly great. And when we sort of skip ahead to the driving sections, you'll see that the Xbox 360 version actually outperforms uh, the Switch. And uh, the driving controls on the Switch are, are balked as well. So I ended up careening off the side of the road. But um, yeah, to set the stage for Deadly Premonition 2, Deadly Premonition 1, I mean, I played it for an hour. I'm told it does dip, but in the hour I played it, it was absolutely fine. 30 frames per second, locked frame pacing. It is interesting actually to hear you talk about this only because people are getting a very fresh take on the series. Because you really, like you said, you haven't played these games before. This was your first experience with them, but you're already aware of its cult status. I love listening to this <laughs> to begin with, but I think at this point, it's fair to say that 
yeah, the game was fine on 360, but everywhere else it got ruined. And PS3 is where it started. They did change the controls there. Um, they made some changes to the visuals as well. And in most cases, I thought everything they did to the PS3 version was bad. And if that's the version you played first, then I guess I can kind of understand how you might say, oh, I, we don't mind the bad frame rate for the second one. But again, uh, even that version is better than what we ended up with in the sequel. Well, look, 360 is absolutely fine in my opinion, but it is not janky. It's simply, I think you said it best in saying that it's like a PS2 port to a Xbox 360. That's kind of the way it looks and feels to me. Yeah, I was always okay with the look of the original, to be honest. It, it is a low-budget game, and that is part of its charm, but it, it, it has like a lot of heart to it. Uh, that does, to me, feel like one of those kind of fun, experimental... Uh, PS2 survival horror experiences obviously filtered through the Twin Peaks lens. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I know it had quite some development history. It had first been announced in 2007 and then disappeared for a while before being released in 2010. Uh, I don't... I can't remember if there is actually some sort of PS2 background to this somewhere in there, but Swery had worked on PS2 games and SNK games before that as well, including... Extermination on PlayStation 2, which, by the way, I do enjoy, and it is a 60 frames per second game. <laughs> well, all of which is fascinating, um, but it brings us to Deadly Premonition 2, uh, which, again, I, I bought it on the day of release. I, I just don't know where to begin here. I know where to begin. At the beginning? <laughs> well, yes, but also, first, let's, as far as I know, the original game was designed using their own internal tools and technology, right? Okay. It wasn't stunning. But it was fine. It looked okay. Creating Deadly Premonition 2, the team has seemingly moved over to Unity. And this is after creating Dark Dreams Don't Die, or D4, uh, for Xbox One using Unreal Engine. So mm. I'm not one to point fingers at engines here. That's definitely not the case. Unity is a very powerful tool. It's a very flexible tool, and you can do amazing things with it. But clearly the development team here ran into some serious issues that makes me think it was designed specifically like primarily on the PC first and foremost, and then when it came time to try to get this running well on the Switch, they really struggled. Almost akin to, dare I say, Sonic Boom on Wii U with its CryEngine roots, which, again, that initial trailer looked awesome, and then you see what the, when it became a Nintendo exclusive, didn't turn out so well, and uh, unfortunately that is the case here. But from the beginning, it doesn't seem that atrocious. Well, it, it kind of is in that, you know, if we look at this, <laughs> it's, it's you know, we're, we're rendering a corridor here. I've got to say the controls here, you either, if, when you touch the controls, you move forward. There's nothing you can do. And you stop, then you stop. But otherwise, any controller movement moves you forward into this prolonged uh, kind of interrogation sequence with an older version of York here. Uh, although he's actually got a different name here. So something, something has happened. That ties into the story of the original. Right, and, you know, okay. What happened to him in the past, and that's a whole thing. I won't spoil it here if you still haven't played the original, but it is part of that. And yes, this is this is him talking a much older version of himself. Yeah, but, you know, we're rendering a room here at 22 frames per second. <laughs> and okay, yeah, this, this is not good. <laughs> and um, what actually happens here is that this prolonged interrogation running at this frame rate basically plays out for i reckon uh, close to half an hour i was actually skipping things uh, because I, I just couldn't i just couldn't take it anymore <laughs> i'm okay with that see that that's the the fun quirky dialogue is why you come to this to this series i think well quirky is certainly an interesting take on it because then you get this <laughs> intro that's running at 30 frames per second but but look at what it's doing to the frame time graph there it's <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so that's that's clearly uh, an issue with video well, playback. Well, or then. just the nature of the content. You c it doesn't really make any difference at this point because it is the most bizarre, whacked out. It's kind of like um, a Bond intro on acid. I think. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's just utterly bizarre. But then you sort of cut into the game. Well, actually, no. Before we talk about the game, the loading is atrocious. It's it can be anything up to like a minute and twenty seconds of looking at a tree. Uh, this tree specifically <laughs> and um, yeah I mean you're, you're looking at a tree occasionally you've got these um, these leaves that, that, that kind of zoom by but then it will, the loading will freeze for like seconds on end you don't know whether the machine has crashed or not I mean here we go and it just stops and 
and this just carries on. The loading is, as I said, it's it is pretty atrocious. So yeah, this 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 sets a bad precedent then, right? Because the first game on 360 starts up that initial dark sequence. It's locked 30 FPS mostly. The loading is fine. You know, it looks a little jerky, but that's just you know the nature of the animation. But it starts out okay. Whereas in this game, clearly right away. You have an interrogation scene in a room running at sub 30 FPS, and then you immediately hit a very, very lengthy loading screen, which is sort of a, a warning of what's to come, I suppose. Yeah, but then you get this extended breakfast scene, which is seemingly inside or rather outside in the open world, and it's running at a better frame rate than the room that we just saw. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> which is kind of weird. And then, you know, this, com again, it's an extremely lengthy conversation. Let's just skip by it and get to the main event, which is, I think, what people are really upset about, which is once you go outside of your hotel, um, you, you kind of have this sort of skateboard traversal mechanic. Which is awesome. I'm into that. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. Maybe not the implementation. <laughs> yeah, the, but the performance level here is disastrous. Here's an interesting thing about loading, where I'm just trying to access this sheriff's van here, and the game just freezes, and then we get to a cutscene. There's kind of a lot of stutter here. Um, going into doors can cause freezing. Firing the gun, I noticed, can freeze the game for you know, a split second. But um, that's kind of you know just sort of general jank. But... Um, Look at oh no! <laughs> when when you're outside in the open world um, and kind of moving about, then you're kind of mostly in 15 frames per second territory. I was kind of trying to figure out what was going on here. This was my first time on the skateboard, by the way. And yeah, you, you know, again, whoops, just a pause there. And yeah, you're showing me this footage live, by the way, so I can actually see what you're doing <laughs> because I, you know. <laughs> I had to share it. I had to come up with a mechanism because most of the time when we do dual VOs, we're kind of just talking from notes, but you, you, you have to see this to believe it. I think a lot of the critiques so far I can see being totally fine in this game, and, but honestly, this is the problem here. This is it. And this this is not acceptable to me uh, <laughs> at all, to be honest. Yeah. The fact is, you know, my original experience was nothing like this and i'd say even on ps3 which was terrible it was not this bad like this is this gets to the point where just navigating the world is not fun any longer like yeah. how can you appreciate anything when it's this choppy and this is where you look at the game and you think this was not ready to ship like this is not an acceptable technical condition i mean it's not this doesn't look great but it looks fine for what you would have expected from the game uh, maybe a little bit overly bright though i might say but that you know that works but really this this frame rate look at this this is genuinely running uh at the levels of something like perfect dark on nintendo 64 no joke in <laughs> fact this is worse than the, a lot of the average single player sequences in perfect dark this might be the slowest modern game i've ever seen like this is worse than lichdom battle mage which i mean lichdom battle mage <laughs> yeah, if we say that what about arc this is worse this is worse i think than arc survival evolved because of how sustained it is yeah okay like there's nothing going on here and it's just the frame rate is so low <laughs> uh so, yeah i'm i'm in awe here like i don't understand how how they thought that it was acceptable to ship it in this condition yeah and it's really it's this it's really unfortunate because this is something i would like to play at some points I do enjoy this kind of quirky storytelling, and it does take me back to a different era in a way as well. But this is not the way to do it. Like it's this, we need another version of this game. Clearly, I'm not an expert on the storytelling, but from what I can tell, um, the 360 version, the original game, all of the sort of idiosyncratic dialogue and uh, eccentricity was kind of like um, integrated into the gameplay. So when he's doing his um, sort of observations on 80s movies he's doing it like maybe when you're on the road driving about and it kind of breaks up the the monotony a bit but here you just get like extended monologues from him that actually break up the gameplay and i found it really annoying so we've got another one of these extended loading screens here <laughs> that's, that's another thing this, this issue with it's these long loading screens combined with the unbelievably sluggish performance that's just it is shocking to see. 
Yeah. I really don't know how else to put it. And it's really, it, it is genuinely disappointing. And I, like I said already many times now, this is not what fans of the original game should be expecting. Like, this is significantly worse yeah. than anything that Swery has worked on before. By far. Like, it's just not up to par. I don't really know what, where they can go from here. There's been talk of patches and stuff, but uh, this looks like a real issue at the, at the core engine level that would need an enormous, gigantic level of optimization to sort out here. And um, is, is it going to happen? I assume they didn't have uh, Unity source access, and I even wonder if they have the technical know-how to really utilize it in that way. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I said it before, but the Unity engine is, is very capable on Switch, from what I understand, talking to developers. We've seen excellent examples of it. I think Ukulele in the Impossible Lair remains one of my favorite examples as a game that runs extremely well on the Switch at 60 frames per second with 3D beautiful visuals and even stuff like the conversion of Ori in the Blind Forest. That's really nice on the Switch. There's been plenty of solid Unity games and I understand they're trying to do more of an open world here, but this is not an especially complex map and each of these areas like inside the bowling alley, for instance, it's a bespoke area that's loaded separately. Yeah. So I, you know, my theory remains that it's probably a CPU limitation, I'd say, first and foremost. Especially, you notice when you were in the open world looking at the ground, it didn't have any impact on the frame rate, right? It was still slow. <laughs> oh, really? So, they, <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> I'm sure it was optimized around their PCs, and um, somehow, I, I can't imagine how, it just the conversion process to Switch must have befuddled them. It created some kind of issue along the way, because it's just... Um, that's, the only, that's really the only thing I can think of. Yeah. And I do think it's going to be difficult to fix it on the Switch. I mean, it may be possible, but I kind of feel like if they shipped it in this condition, they may require external help <laughs> to get it into shape. Let's just try and find some silver linings here. Uh, the game runs at 810p versus 720p of the first one. I don't think resolution is particularly a prime aspect of this particular game worth discussing. But Did you get to test it in a portable mode, by the I way? I didn't spend a long time playing this game in portable mode. It's still pretty dreadful. But uh, what I will say is that uh, it seems to be the case that when you reload the game, <laughs> you get improved performance. So maybe there's some kind of memory leak or, or something going on in the background here. But suffice to say, it's not a great experience in mobile mode. All right, so let's talk about this then. You've played all these games for the first time over the weekend. Is the 360 version the only version you think you could see yourself maybe sitting down with and then trying to enjoy? Um, I think the Switch would be doable. I mean, there are parts of it that are bad. The driving is really bad. I mean, I've only played the first hour of it. Other than that, it was above 30 frames per second. It's still sort of a bit sort of wobbly because the performance level changes so much so yeah i think i would prefer to play it on 360 via back compat at least that would solve any performance issues you'd think yeah and i kind of prefer the look of the 360 version myself it's a darker more contrasty game that just kind of fits the style more in my eyes yeah i think um sort of in summary uh <laughs> the um the xbox 360 game starts with a car crash but the real car crash is the sequel on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, that's all from us for now. I think I think we've, we've kind of seen enough here. It's been a rather unorthodox video for us, but I think we just needed to get a look at this. It kind of came out of left field. I think we were all tied up with other projects, and it's like, wait a minute. there's a, This hits a Switch, and it's this bad? <laughs> yeah. It's the sort of thing where we had to quantify just how bad it was, and here it is. <laughs> so yes, if you did enjoy the video, uh, please like, subscribe, share, and um, thanks for joining me in this one, John. Sure. <laughs> thanks for saving my sanity. But anyway, that's all from us for now. Thanks for watching.